In this example, we're asked to determine the gauge pressure at various points in this sort of strange arrangement of fluid and air, water and air specifically. We're asked to find the gauge pressure at points B, C, D, E in this system. And we're given some of the heights, um, you know, the various points. So let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, the gauge pressure at point A would just be atmospheric pressure because it's open to the atmosphere. So, so pressure at A would just be zero gauge. All right, let's go to the point B. So to go to point B, we're going to go down in the fluid. We're going to start with the pressure at A. We're going to go down in the fluid to a distance of the, right here at this point. The pressure at B is going to be the same as that because we're still in water and we can move over. Another way to think about it is we could go all the way down to find the pressure at the bottom here. That would be adding in the weight of the fluid over the distance HA. And then we could subtract out and the pressure in the water coming up the distance of HB to get to point B there. So it's another way you could go about it. But in the end, what we'll get is the pressure at B will be the pressure at A plus rho of the water times G times HA minus HB. HA minus HB because that's what this distance is here. We're adding in the weight of the water over that distance, which is this distance. So that gives us the pressure at B. All right, we're now asked to find the pressure at C. Okay, well, to get to the pressure at C, we're gonna have to, we can go right back over to this point, right? So the pressure at B is right here. It's the same pressure there. It'll also be the same pressure here. So to find the pressure at C, we can just start at the pressure at B, and we're gonna subtract out the weight of the water moving up this distance, which corresponds to, let's see, it'd be HC minus HB. So it'd be HC minus HB. So that's this distance right here. Let me just go ahead and draw it in. So this distance is HC minus HB. And this distance is HA minus HB. Okay, so that's the pressure at point C then. Now, the pressure at point D, right here, it's going to be the same as the pressure at C because they're just open to the air here. And remember that the pressure in air doesn't really change. Since it's a gas, it really doesn't change much with altitude. The altitudes would have to be huge for that to be important. And we see that these altitudes are relatively small. So the pressure at D is just going to be the same as the pressure at C. Okay, Because, again, they're both exposed to the same air. Now to find the pressure at E, we're going to start with the pressure at D, and we can just move straight over horizontally because the pressure doesn't change as you move laterally in the same fluid. So the pressure, pressure at E is going to be the pressure at D, and then we're going to subtract out the weight of the water as we move up this distance. Because we're, we're moving up here. That distance is going to be HE minus HD. So we'll subtract out HE minus HD. So that's how you find the pressure at all of these various points. And if we plugged in these values down into here, along with the density of water, so let me write the density of water. Density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Gravitational acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared. So when you plug in these numbers, you'll get PA, of course, is 0. Gauge. All of these will be gauge pressures. PB, when you plug in the numbers, comes out to be 39.2 kilopascals gauge. PC, which is also the same as PD, will be minus 9.8 kilopascals gauge. So it's actually below atmospheric pressure. And then PE is even further below uh, atmospheric pressure. It's minus 58.9 kilopascals gauge. So those are the resulting pressures at the various locations. So this is a, a relatively straightforward application of the hydrostatic pressure distribution. You just The key things to remember is when you move down in the fluid, you're adding weight. When you move up, you're subtracting weight. And you just have to make sure you have the right density that you're moving through. So here it's all water. And then you have to get the elevation differences correct, you know, as you go from point A to point B. I guess the last uh, two other things, if you move horizontally in the same fluid, it'll be the same pressure. And then if you have two points exposed to the same gas, 
there the pressures are the same because the pressure doesn't change much when you're dealing uh, with elevation changes in gases.